Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of step-by-step -step setup of vegetation on the landscape using Brushify IIO. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. In this video, I'll be setting up a new grass type on my M landscape material. So here we have a mossy rock texture that I have applied to my landscape. And here we're continuing off with changing some of those node names within this material itself. So if you've been using Brushify IO and you have this M landscape open up, uh, in the previous video I worked with some of the other rock formations and in this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab one of the other nodes that I have not used yet and we're going to rename that to one of those mossy rocks, uh, mossy rocks and from there we'll be able to uh, set it up in a way that it will spawn all the vegetation and some of the rock formation just like I did with the previous video. Now this one right here is going to be a different biome compared to the other one. So it's totally cool if we are reusing some of the old nodes here because all of that is all matter of the names of your parameter. So in this case we have a mossy rock and I'm also going to be using just one, so we're going to get rid of all this unnecessary node. And I'm going to change the value back to 1. And of course, do notice how my one of my enable 6 it says 2. But again, I previously mentioned in the other video that the actual value is from 0 to 1. So that's something I still have to fix, but unfortunately uh, didn't realize that until later. So let's go ahead and name it Enable Mossy Rock to make sure that corresponds to our uh, sample of Mossy Rock. And then over here, we also have our Mossy Rock that uh, contains a grass type named LG Forest. So this was also original grass type that was given by Brushify IO. And I'm just going to rename it to Mossy Rocks. And now we should be able to use that as our default to spawn all the vegetation. Let's go ahead and find it real quick to make sure it is correct. Okay, so it is correct. Uh, again, and when you type these in, make sure the names correspond accordingly. You might end up having some issues. So this one has nine different array elements. I'm going to go ahead and delete them all. I'm going to minimize the window. And I'm going to go ahead to my other content folder and find where everything else that I have stored here regarding the meshes for this particular biome. So this right here is sun and branches. This was one of the projects from Marketplace. Uh, there's over 24 different items. We have different branches, some stones, even tree tr uh, stumps. But I will be focusing on the stones, maybe the branches. And, of course, I will add some extra vegetation, maybe some type of fern for the mossy rock formations. So let's go ahead and add a new rock. We're going to use SM Rock 10. And we're going to leave grass density at 100 for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and change the scale value between 0.05 and maybe 0.5 so that way it's not too large again the reason it's not showing up first I'm gonna save it and I will continue adding those and then once we enable it you will be able to see how it spawns every time I add new elements to this grass type so we know that something is not properly being set up here so we'll have to change the values of this to make sure, so we have Mossy Rock and Mossy Rock over here. So everything is correct, but again, uh, the value oh, it has to be properly set up. And here we go, looks like it just took some time for it to render for the first time. As long as it's set to a value of 1, it should spawn all of the vegetation that you're placing on your particular landscape material texture that you have here. Let's go ahead and continue adding those stone formations to 
our material here or the grass type I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change the value to 20 and of course the size is gonna be downsized now some of these could be used as boulders but if you're trying to create that a different variation in sizes especially with rocks uh, there's two ways of doing it one where you can create a different scale on x value so you can go more than size one or keep it a one if you're using this particular project to have boulders um, but keep that in mind that there is no guarantee on how many large rock formations will be spawned and how many small rock formations will be spawned uh, that being said if you want to control that the only way of doing it right now that i figured out is by recreating or by duplicating the actual static mesh of that particular static mesh that you're working with so in case in this case there will be a rock and you can create a new grass type using new settings for that particular static mesh but if you're happy with the results you can keep it as is uh, the other thing about this uh, grass type with the rocks uh, the one down side about this is that uh, it doesn't give you how deep you can have these rocks being spawned in the ground however it does say that you can enable random rotation which is that's what i have enabled and also align the surface and also receive uh, decals which was the the actual uh, basic function and cast dynamic shadows also is enabled so these two i did not really touch uh, but the random rotation and align to surface I think there's two that are very important to use when you're messing with rocks, especially using the grass type, because random rotation will create a random rotation for each of those rocks to make it look like they are not too repetitive, especially if they're all looking in the same direction, and of course that they align to the surface of the ground, so there's no, not necessarily clipping, but a gap between the rock and the landscape formation so you have nothing floating and uh, that being said it means that the rocks do spawn on the top of the surface or maybe slightly in the ground however you cannot adjust that here in your grass type settings so unfortunately i kind of have to play around with it and as you can see i'm playing with some of these numbers for the rock formations because again visually i do not know what to expect from each of those particular rock formations uh, therefore i have to play around with this stuff so we'll keep some of these relatively similar some of it will be larger some of them will be smaller uh, again a mixture of both is definitely not a problem and the start cooling distance and it and cold distance uh, that again will be touched in the future maybe in the future videos where i can start adjusting this right now the goal is pretty much set up all some of the vegetation uh, go back and fix some of the other ones uh, also make sure that when you do work with these models you do have all your lods properly set up for each model so that way you don't have overload for compiling all your shaders not only that but uh, you, it will decrease the amount of frame drops that you have so the cold distance is great for cutting it off and controlling how far it's uh, visually visible and LODs are used to decrease the amount of polygons that are used for that particular static mesh based on the size of your screen so the farther you go away the smaller screen will look uh, comparing to the object itself so the screen of your monitor doesn't change but the actual visual representation of that item changes and therefore your LOD levels will change so that needs to be applied not only to the rocks but also to the sticks uh, vegetation stones seaweed palm trees and every other vegetation that I have in this game but cool distance is definitely a great tool to use that to completely cut off some of the vegetation that you don't want to spawn because keep in mind LED doesn't mean that the item will stop spawning at a particular distance 
whereas the grass type with a cool distance that's exactly what it does it calls for a particular distance from the viewer or from the camera depending on how, uh, what you're setting up here it's usually based on the camera that you're working with and it's a great tool to use to help you with the frame drop and the best way to do it of course is to randomly create a distance so don't be just giving a cool distance of let's say 5,000 to all the rocks and maybe 4,000 to all the plants try to create some different variations you know maybe you have a starting start cone distance at a particular uh, distance but the end cool distance is I guess what's more important because that's the last thing you'll see uh, and that takes uh, some practice and experience so here now we have this uh, fern type mixed with some of the rock formation doesn't look too bad there's some clipping going on where the foliage spawns within the rocks but I don't know if I can actually again do any of this stuff with the grass type here because you can't have it set up like you do with the procedural foliage box where you can avoid the collisions like that um, but that being said going back to end cool distance the best thing to do is just to create a different diversities of distances to create a better smooth transition for the player so that way the larger objects dissipate or disappear at the much larger distance and the smaller ones will of course begin to disappear at the much shorter distance but keep in mind that as you do it you will have to go back to it every single time not necessarily every single time but once you set everything up you can always go back and rework some of the stuff and that's exactly what I'm going to do here in the future so I'll start with the basic we'll introduce some cool distance then we'll have to go back and retweak it and then obviously when we start adding more stuff like buildings uh, you know mountains that are actually maybe cliffs you know other trees and all that stuff when we, once we add everything into the game then we can go back and rework all the cool distance for all of them so let's go ahead and create a new material for uh, rock cliff because this is right here is rock cliff 3 which was one of my textures that I used for spawning a particular texture on my landscape and it was called uh, rock cliff 03 this was just something uh, I downloaded through Quixel mixer where you can get all the free textures uh, so you can also download them online and use them the same way as I do but the name was given as is and 03 just represents that I had three of them on my list here so I have Rockcliff 01, 02 and 03 that I'm using it's just easy to track uh, nothing too fancy about it you know trying to keep it a little bit uh, more compact and not too complicated especially with names here but what I'm gonna do with the Rockcliff I'm gonna see if I can add some other type of a variation of the grass type and when I talk about the grass type I'm actually referring to the rock formations so here I'm creating another nine different array elements and this is our current texture of the rock cliff I believe this is rock cliff 03 that I'm supposed to be working on because the first one is one of the other type of rocks but as of right now I have absolutely nothing spawning on here so what I'm gonna do is begin to add any type of rocks that might match somewhat the color of that texture in the background of this texture because I have a little bit of a darker sand to it and a lighter color of the stone so let's go ahead and add that it seems like you would match slightly by colors again I'm not trying to be too picky about it but every time you do add a new rock formation to your grass type you can see that it begins to compile shaders and sometimes it asks you to rebuild the grass maps and you can do that as well it's a pretty easy step when you rebuild that all you have to do is just rebuild your grass maps 
So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more, even though nothing is currently appearing on the landscape. I'm going to go ahead and add a second one. And I believe this landscape material of this particular rock cliff has been placed all the way from the top of the mountains and all the way to, into the ocean, all the way to the bottom of the ocean. So I got to keep in mind what I place on this. In the previous video, I mentioned that there is no height boundaries for placing in grass type unless you go into the M landscape and tell each individual uh, rock formation, I guess you can say, or the grass type formation that I have here to spawn at the particular height. As of right now, I don't have that system set up, nor it is given through Brushify IO. However, you can use that using procedural generation, if you're familiar with what I'm talking about. But here, since it's one texture, I cannot use whatever I want on this texture. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to place this uh, fern type to show you that once it's there, it will spawn all the way across to the world, from the top to the bottom of it. And... As of right now, it's not spawning anything because the value of it is probably not at 1 and 0. So let's go ahead and change that really quick. Okay, so now we have 8 and then we have 9 that we need to add. Let's go ahead and open this up. Just drop down this arrow. Add another type of fern. You can click on the arrow to populate it as well. Now, the usual grass density begins, I believe, at like 400. So you can always increase, decrease it. And last but not least, I'm going to take another fern type. So if we go from 0.023, maybe we can do 0.03 or 4. Uh, and again, I might just rework some of this stuff later. But again, testing is something that is time-consuming. And definitely need it. So let's go ahead and click save. And then I'm going to go back to M landscape. And make sure that everything is properly connected. And nothing has been changed. So in the next video we'll work with some of the seaweed that I previously worked with too. But this time it's going to be a grass type as well. And I hope this video was helpful. You can see that as of right now, the value is set to zero. So it just needs to be changed in order for that to spawn. But that being said, I hope I will see you guys in the next video. And can't wait to see what you guys come up with on your own. Until next time.